All right, guys, so before I jump into this video, let's talk about some quick specs between the two. So the Epson 6050 MSRP on that one's going to be 3999 and then for the JVC, it will be 6999 and those are both USD. Uh, another big thing to note in between the two is that the Epson is a three LCD chip design, and then the JVC is a three uh, chip um LCOS, which basically means liquid crystal on silicon, and uh, they are 0.67 inches in uh, their design, each, each, each individual one of those three chip designs, and the difference in between the reflective material is one-tenth the size of a human hair, so it's in the microns, or it's in the micrometers in measurements. So the JVC is a DILA, which, which I call it a DILA. It is a direct drive image light amplifier, and that basically describes its uh, complete motor system that makes this entire uh, setup work. So with the Epson, it'll be 1.2 million to one dynamic contrast ratio, and then on the JVC, it'll be 400,000 to one. Now with the JVC, it'll also be 40,000 to one, uh, what I like to call real contrast ratio, and then for the Epson, they don't broadcast it. Like I, I can't find it on their website, I can't find it anywhere. Uh, online, so if you guys know it, go ahead and leave it down below in the comments, and then we'll go ahead and address that later on. And then with the Epson, you get a motorized dust cap, so whenever it turns off, you uh, basically hide the lens, but with the JVC, you have to put a plastic uh, dust cap back on the lens if you're not using it. So um, it would be really cool to have one of those motorized ones, but um, depending on how well they are utilized, you may not need it anyway. But I have a really dusty environment, so that's one thing I wanted to note. Okay, so let's talk about some of the parameters of this actual comparison. So I use the um, Emotiva XMC2 as the processor, it has two HDMIs on the back of it. I plugged in two of the exact same, exact same length, exact same model, fiber HDMI cables on the back of it, and then I plugged both of them in on HDMI 1, 1, <laughs> on the actual projectors themselves. And then another thing is both of these have next to zero hours on them. The JVC is brand new out of the box, so it has almost zero hours on it. The only time that it was turned on was whenever I did the auto tone mapping feature right out of the box. And one thing to note is that it doesn't come with it right out of the box. So you do have to do it if you want to have the auto tone mapping feature. And that was one of the first things that I did with this one, gave it a little time to breathe. And then I started the setup. The Epson basically has a fresh bulb in it. So I replaced that one uh, before I started doing these comparisons. So one to one, it's as true as I could have made it to um, have a one to one type of comparison. Obviously, it's not the best way to do it. The best way to do it would be to have both of these on the exact same height up on the ceiling. That's not possible because one of them's uh, mounted already. And then I basically put the uh, uh, the JVC as, as high up as I could. So the angle of incidence is slightly different, but if you're looking line of sight, the JVC is almost exactly in line with the top of the screen. So that's actually really good too. So another thing I will want to mention is I use blanking on the projectors whenever I wasn't using them. So whenever I did that real time shift, it was blanking in between the two. So if you're looking at the lens itself, when it's being blanked, you're not seeing a picture on the screen. It's black, but it still is giving a little bit of light from the actual lens itself. So ideally you would want to block that light source and then uh, whenever you're using one versus the other one, and then you want to have them equally on the exact same height. So with this one, obviously it wasn't done on the exact same height. And then even then, if they were, you would still have, you wouldn't be able to have the lenses right next to each other because of the actual physical size of the projector. So there really is no right way of doing these projector shootouts. I'm trying to make it as good as possible. Uh, I didn't change any of the camera settings. All of them were set. I didn't change any of the focus on any of these. I try to make it as true as possible to you guys so you guys know which one to actually go out and get. <sighs> Alright guys, so play along. Let me know which one you like the most. I'm going to play all of these throughout the entire clip from beginning to end, and then I'll put them side by side, and then later on I'll let you know which one they are. The biggest thing that I noticed is in the highlights, you want to make sure that you're not hot spotting, and then also on the dark parts that you can actually still see. This is a critical part. If you guys can still see this, I uh, hope it comes through on the camera. Um, it's on the verge of hotspotting right here. Notice that the letters in the whites have a slight yellowish tint. It's not necessarily the white white, but typically whenever there's a printed words, you'll see that, what I'm talking about.
Okay, so now let's go ahead and switch over to the other projector. Okay, so this is a brand new clip. So both of those opening flying over scenes are both pretty dim. I don't know why they filmed it like that, but that's just the way the, the colors come out. These are ultra realistic right here and the color recreation, especially in the sky. I think it could use a little more pop though. But notice how the white on the, the letters aren't yellow. And this one is very, very bright right here. So the sunset scene is probably my favorite right here to enjoy. There you go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, tell you exactly which one's playing and then I'm going to switch hopefully real time in between the two on this demo. Okay, so now we're starting off with the Epson starting this, this demo. And this is the JVC. Still the JVC, switching over to the Epson. This is the Epson. This is the JVC. Still the JVC, Epson. And then we just finished on the Epson. So let me know which one you guys think is, uh, is better or worse. I mean, uh, this is just a quick comparison. I tried filming this thing several times and it was uh, a huge pain because you know the I couldn't get the camera settings right so I was trying to perfect this to give you guys the most realistic uh, comparison possible so I finally got the camera settings right it's the camera settings weren't moved in between the two the focus is is, is perfect on, on both of these as compared to last time whenever we did a comp uh, projector comparison some people were complaining that the focus was off so I spent pretty much half the day trying to make this video happen for you guys so please appreciate it
Okay, so let's talk about this comparison. So with the Epson, I noticed on the non-HDR content that the colors didn't pop as much as the JVC. It uh, didn't matter if the JVC was on HDR or non-HDR content, didn't matter what the resolution was. The colors just came through natural, realistic, and there was an increased amount of sharpness in there as well. Um, I don't know if it's that much difference in sharpness to warrant uh, the, the big price jump, but uh, you guys can be the, uh, the, the judge of that. So with the Epson, it was overall brighter. So with even HDR content, non-HDR content, the overall image was just gonna be brighter in general. And uh, with the JVC, it just seemed like whenever you uh, had it maximized at its full potential, um, I will go into talking about it being maximized at its full potential a little later on. But uh, even at its you know peak form uh, in 4K HDR, uh, the image was just darker in general. And the HDR suffered, I think, with that, but, um, and that's just indirect comparison. If you're watching either of these side by side, I'm pretty sure you'd be happy with the image. So I will say that the Epson, in my opinion, had better um, HDR, but the JVC had better colors and it had better sharpness. The biggest thing to note is that uh, the Epson is a 4K E-Shift projector, so it's basically uh, getting your 1080p and then multiplying it by half a, uh, a, a pixel in um, relation to where it was in the first place. So you're supposed to be getting that 4K effect, but you're not getting the true um, 4K resolution because that is 8.8 .8 million pixels. You will get the size, but you're not getting the pixel count. So that's a 2.3 million pixel count on the Epson, and then you're getting the full 8.8 .8 million on the uh, JVC itself. I, could I count them? Could I see them all? I don't, I don't think so, but I did notice that there was a little bit more sharpness on the JVC. Biggest thing to note was the auto tone mapping feature. That is a game changer. Um, I really like the way that it, you can either choose either frame by frame or even scene by scene, how it will um, choose the metadata and um, give you the best um, image possible. So it's kind of like it's it's always calibrating the, the, the signal. Doesn't matter if you're watching 4K um, streaming, doesn't matter if you're watching a Blu-ray disc, doesn't matter if you're watching 4K on a, a, a UHD disc, it'll always cost, it's always constantly looking at the metadata that's receiving to give you the most accurate and best picture possible. So I think that's really a game changer. And the cool thing is, is I'm not sure a lot of people know this, um, I was privy to this this weekend, but the Panasonic and the JVC were basically um, designed together to work together. So um, if, if, if you have the Panasonic UB9000, you will be able to reap sp specific benefits in the settings that the uh, JVC projectors have that most other projectors don't have. Another thing I will say is that there was a slight better uh, motion on the JVC. It has enhanced motion processors in there and the Epson just doesn't have that. So I would like to see something a little more fast paced. That's why I picked that one part of Jumanji that was a little more uh, fast paced action. Um, but at the same time, the only thing that the Epson has is you can either choose fine or fast on its processing. On the JVC, you have tons of options uh, for processing. You have the motion, and then you also have the uh, the, the colors as well. But um, for, for, for my taste, I think that the JVC looked a little more realistic, um, but the Epson had a little more of that film type of uh, um, realism to it. So if you like, <laughs> If you like watching movies, then it might be really good for you on the Epson side. But if you like watching, uh, you know, more like TV and different things like that, or if you like fast paced action, then maybe the JVC is the way to go. So what both of these are good for is they're both known for low heat and low noise. Um, I didn't notice any depreciable heat that was on the JVC. I noticed, I know the Sony's put out a ton of heat. So um, that's one thing that's also to note, because some people don't think about that because they may be coming from a TV and they don't necessarily think about the heat or the noise that's gonna be caused with the projector. So that's one thing I wanted to note with you guys. One more thing to talk about is that there are no specs for the JVC that I found online for its latency. I know that the Epson has roughly a 27 millisecond latency on it. And then uh, the JVC has a low latency mode. So I don't know what the actual latency number is on it, but I'm sure that if, if you were to use these for gaming purposes, that you would just be fine with either one of these. One more thing to note with the JVC is that it has specific screen uh, parameters that you can set in the projector itself. So um, I'm, I'm guessing in JVC and all their wisdom, they have a nice uh, idea of what your projector screen is. So they have samples of all these things and they basically uh, try to put a nice color recreation in its uh, in, in its settings. So if you have you know a, an elite screens or if you have a daylight screen or if you have an SI screen, depending on which model it is, there's a figure on their website and it's a table and you input that in one of the settings to maximize your projector to your screen. So that's that's something really cool. And that's one thing I did before I actually did this comparison. 
So that's it guys. Well, I guess I'm gonna go ahead in this video here. Um, uh, there are differences in between these two. Just wrapping it up, I think you will get a better HDR on the Epson. And then uh, I think that you get a slight edge on sharpness and color recreation in general on the uh, JVC. Now, um, is it worth the extra money for you to go in between the two? Um, I don't know, it's basically up to you. Uh, for me, I'm happy that I made the purchase with the 6050. I bought my 6050 a couple months ago. So if you guys want any of these projectors, make sure you hit up my buddies over at Dream Media. I'm going to leave their information down below. I actually bought my uh, 6050, the one that I used in this uh, this uh, shootout. I actually bought it from those guys a couple months ago. I've been extremely happy with the 6050 ever since then. And even after I started doing my calibration settings on it, it made it that much even better. So um, if you really want your stuff to pop, make sure you calibrate it. I don't think the JVC necessarily needs it, but with the RS2000, whenever I do that shootout, I will do a calibration in between the two of them. So if you like this video, make sure you like, favorite, share, and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.